Hello everyone. In today's session, we will talk about a very common mistake a lot of beginners on a Spring Framework do. We will see a code and we will try to identify what is the problem using a very simple flowchart. And after that, we will try to understand the use cases when we should not create the beans, even though we are using Spring Framework to manage the beans. And we will talk about few misconceptions about prototype and singleton scope. So welcome. This is a user controller class. It's a spring rest controller. It's a very simple class. And uh, here it is a method defined and there is an endpoint defined, which accepts user ID and it try to fetch the user's phone. Okay, let's see what this is doing. So it calls the user service. Okay, so user service is this one. And with the user service, I try to get the user. And if user is empty, it returns HTTP status not found. Otherwise, it fetch the phone from it and returns the HTTP status 200 OK. And if I go into the user service get user method here, this is user service. And from Redis, this user is fetched using the Redis template. This is the Redis template. Okay. And whatever the response come from there, it is sent back. And here we can see Redis template is uh, defined and another user is auto wired. Okay. And this is a user class, a simple plain pod pojo, right? Okay. So now here we can see user is auto wired. Is it a problem? Let's try to understand it with a simple flowchart. So here you can see it's a server. So a Spring Boot app, it's running an embedded server, right? Let's say Tomcat it is running on. So any request which reaches this controller, first it has to reach, uh, first it has to go through server. Inside server, there is a lot of stuff, connector thread pool, servlet container thread pool. Let's just skip out it. But what happens that request range reaches user controller. By default, any bean in a spring is singleton. So user controller is also singleton. Same way user service, Redis template and this user object, which was auto wired in user service. So this is also a singleton bean. So let's see what happens when a request comes. Uh, let's say request one comes. So request one reaches server and this server handed over the request to user controller. So this is the user controller bean. It calls the service layer with the help of user service bean. And user service, it invokes Redis using Redis template. So Redis template is a Spring Framework provided bean for us. Okay. By default, it is also singleton. So Data is fetched from Redis, handed over back to user service. User service, what it do? It put the data inside the user object, right? And then uh, the reference X, this is the reference of this object. Basically behind the scene, everything is an object, right? So this reference X is passed back here. And user controller, it try to pull some data, let's say uh, phone from the reference X object that is user and then send it back here and then response is sent back. Okay. What happens when request two comes in? Let's see. So when request two comes, same process is followed request is handed over to user controller 
to the same bean of the user controller to which the request one was submitted right and then same user service redis template and then response come back here and what happens it also put the data inside the user reference x and then it is sent back now let's say let's see what happens when two request comes in parallel in individual request everything was fine now let's say two request has come at the same time request one request two okay so there is one thread one which is taking care of this request and there is another thread two which is taking care of this request so both requests landed user controller same bean right and then it use user service again the same bean and then same redis template bean and then response come back for both of them and both of them try to use this bean for storing the response right reference x let's say so reference x is sent back here and sent back here also so in a way both the threads have received the same reference same object same user right user is singleton so it's the same object there is a possibility that both the threads might end up overriding each other's data behavior is uncertain it totally depends which response has come first so this is a problem the calling applications here it will not get the correct response so what is the solution here in this diagram everything is same only thing what changes here that thread one it puts the data into the new user there is a new user object is created let's say its reference is y and there is another object which is reference x and each thread sends its own reference of user reference y is sent here and it has the data related to reference y is propagated till here and data related to reference x that is this user it is propagated till here so having two separate objects here solves the problem right but someone might say that why to create the new user object why can't we use the prototype bean of user okay so i'll tell you what what will happen with the help of a diagram here in this diagram this is a jvm a spring application okay so it's a jvm process right so it's a very simplified process just to explain a very simple concept so inside jvm there is something spring container and there is some other piece of code within the spring application which is trying to access the beans right so inside a spring container it have lot of stuff going on but i have simplified so assume that there is a kind of table somewhere in this table it contains three things key bean definition and value okay so key is the bean name bean definition is it informs relate uh, it it stores information related to the bean definition okay so scope is one of the things so let's focus on scope and value is like the actual object bean it's a java object right so here we see user controller as singleton and its scope is singleton so there will be one object created so when a spring container starts these these beans are initialized okay until unless they are supposed to be initialized later on because of lazy loading or something else but when the container comes up generally the beans are initialized so at least one object is created here and kept in this mapping same way for user service it happens so user object is created let's assume we have defined our user as a prototype so when container comes up it do not creates any object right so what will happen when a request comes in so let's say 
a request comes in and it asks for the bean who are defined as singleton. So let's say this piece of code is needing a user service bean. User service bean, it's singleton. So what happens whenever a piece of code request for a bean, a spring container try to go through the bean definition and see if it is singleton or not, or if there is any there is scope, right? By default, it is singleton. So user service, it's a singleton bean. So it go and check whether the object is already initialized or not. If yes, it sends back this reference reference to this object. If any other request comes in looking for the same bean user service, so name is here matching. And again, it's a singleton type and this object is already created. So it will respond back the same object. So for both the request, the same object is returned. Okay. A reference of the same object is returned. But what happens when someone requests for the prototype beans? Let's say someone requested for user bean. Okay. So when someone requests for user bean, Spring try to see that, okay, its definition is prototype. So what it will do, it will construct a new user object, a brand new object, and it returns back the reference of this. Let's say if there is any other request for the user, and since it is prototype, a new bean is constructed and sent back the reference of this new bean. So that's how the prototype beans are created. And when someone requests, our new object is returned back. Okay. So when uh, defining the scope of the user as prototype results in a new object, then why I was saying that even if you define user as prototype, it will not work. Why? Okay, because so when application starts, it try to create a user controller bean as a singleton bean because by default it is singleton. So when Spring try to initialize this bean, it realizes that it needs user service to be initialized because user controller is having user service as auto wired. Okay. So it tried to create this bean. And when it tried to create the user service bean, it realizes that, okay, it needs the user bean because it is auto wired. Okay. So it tried to do the get user bean. Okay. So when it tried to do a get bean for this user bean, its a scope is prototype. So what it do? It creates a brand new user user bean okay and that's how initialization of user controller user service and this user object happens okay so now what is happening whenever a request is coming in it is asking for the user controller bean this is already created so when this is already created, it is not requesting for new user service bean. Okay. And when no new creation of user service is happening, it is not asking for creation of user again and again. Right. So that's why no matter how many requests come in, they are going to use the user controller already created bean. And this will use the already created user service bean. Okay. And it is already created. It's a singleton. It's available in the spring container. So it is the creation of this bean is never triggered again. Okay. So that's why doesn't matter. The user object is prototype. User bean will never be asked for so imagine what happens let's say this user controller is defined with the prototype scope okay 
in that case what will happen whenever a new request will come in this new object will be created okay and this will request for user service okay and if this is also defined as prototype so new user service object will be created and since a user is also prototype so then it will lead to the creation of new user object right so that's the reason always defining a bean as prototype doesn't make that for every request you will get a new object it totally depends how your spring beans are configured so now the question is then what to do in such scenarios when we need a new object again and again but because of a spring wiring we cannot get it so solution is very simple and there is a general practice followed that for the data objects for the plain of pojos which are supposed to get the data from one place and they just want to send it to another place so all those objects there is no need to use a spring bean container for those okay simply create the new beans okay so if we just remove it from here and do it here then it would suffice us so for every call what will happen to get user a new user references responded back so i hope you understood now that why for the data objects for the beans for the pojos for the java pojos which are supposed to transfer the data from one place to another place one layer to another layer it's good practice just use new operator it's perfectly fine so let's say user creation is a very complex process it is perfectly fine to create a user like this and simply maybe assign it like this or do a getter setter so basically the objects which are just storing the state there is no need to use spring beans for those scenarios there can be exception but they are really exceptional scenarios okay so if you have any queries if you have any doubts feel free to leave a comment happy learning